Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry. I am the original creator of the Folk Art One Stroke Painting Technique. I'm here today in the Plaid Studio, ready for the third lesson in the Let's Paint Folk Art One Stroke Birds and Blossoms series. I'm thrilled to be here to teach you how fun this goldfinch is going to be to paint. I love that we have something wonderful again this year for you, and that is a kit for this series. And we also have this year the patterns for every bird so you have the exact size to make sure that it's easier for you to paint. And we threw in a few little bird cages and bird house. There's more for you to see. You'll love it. And we have the best paint. We have Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint and there's 12 bottles of that. We have our Folk Art Floaty Medium and we have the Folk Art One Stroke Value Pack set of 10 brushes. So everything you need to be doing the lessons with me, except one more thing, and that's something new this year, and that is a beautiful kit that is full of wood for every surface that we do during this year. If you'd like to check out those kits, please go to platonline.com forward slash let's paint. I'm excited to start painting this goldfinch with you, so let's go gather our supplies and let's get started. I'm excited about this lesson. Look at that goldfinch, all those beautiful feathers. We have some pretty blossoms in here. The thistles are gonna be fun. So to get started, let's look at the supplies we need so we're all together ready to do the lesson together. I want you to go to your kit and pull out your reusable teaching guide out of your Let's Paint Folk Art One Stroke Bird and Blossom Kit. And then on this reusable teaching guide, you're gonna see the list of colors that we're gonna use. So these are multi-surface colors. I'm gonna go through them with you so you can make sure that you've got them. We have the titanium white, classic green, bumblebee, some pure orange, cobalt U, Juneberry, some pure black and dioxazine purple. And always make sure you have your folk art floaty medium, okay? We're also going to have our value pack of brushes. We might not use every single one, but make sure you have those out. You can use a foam plate, but it really helps you to use your double loader. So there's a double loader, a palette, my brush basin, some paper towels, and we're ready to go. So my favorite part of this project is I got to elevate some coasters, wood coasters to put on here with some foam court board, which was kind of fun. And then what we used is three of the four that comes in that package. And then this 12 by 12 wood panel that is wonderful. It's like a wood canvas instead of a regular canvas, which I enjoy that. It also has a frame on there, so, so many times we paint it on the inside. This time we're gonna paint on the outside. So to do this background, we're gonna refer to your teaching guide, your reusable teaching guide under backgrounds, and it's gonna share with you that we're gonna use our three quarter inch flat brush. We're gonna dampen that, lay it on our paper towel. And then the first thing we're gonna do is I've put on a foam plate the cobalt U titanium white, and then on the bottom, we're gonna use titanium white and classic green. All right, so I want this to be like the sky and the ground here. So what I'm gonna do first thing is I'm going to pick up titanium white, the cobalt U. And I'm just going to start, you can see that's a little, let's mix a little bit more. That's a little heavy, we want a lighter than this. And I'm just streaking this back and forth and because it's the sky, it's okay if there's a little bit of movement in here. And I'm coming down a little bit more than halfway, but you want up and down strokes. And I can add a little bit of floating medium to thin it out because I don't want it heavy painting. We're trying to get more of a watercolor effect back there so it's not 
solid paint. And so now what's going to happen, since this is raw wood, what's going to happen is that you uh, will have, it'll, this paint will absorb really well into the wood pretty quick. And so what it will also do is raise the grain of the wood just a little bit. So it'll be fuzziness that you'll feel. And to knock that off in between our first coat and our sometimes our second coat, um, you would take and lightly sand the surface. And then that's going to help you when you're doing your detail work because you won't have roughage from the raised grain. All right, you notice I kept going into the medium. All right, so the important thing is that you have a nice mix here, that you have enough. You can see I'm continuing making more. You can start out with enough, then you can just keep painting and get the same color. I'm not as worried about it on this because, like I said, it's the background of the sky behind the bird. All right, so now this is a little tricky. Let me show you this while I've got blue. Now I'm going to move this over a little bit and show you that if I came along here, I just put it here and do it, but I'm going to move quicker because we, we're on less in here. I want to make sure we can get it all in. So I turn the green so the greens all going the same way, and I line these up. Okay, so basically what I want to do is I went about to right here on our original one, okay? Right along here. And so I'm going to bring the green up to there when I come over to here, okay? So what I'm going to do is match the sky over here. And we don't have to worry about the edges because we're going to put the pure black at the end. All right, so we've got that one that I have to worry about it being a partial. And then this one's going to be the whole piece. All right, getting a little medium. These are going to be lightly sanded also, also when it dries, okay? And this one's all blue. All right, and then what we're going to do on this one is we're going to come right in here <clears throat> and let's pick up the classic green. So I don't worry about taking this blue out of here because it's going to be fine. And I'm going to get a lighter green. So let's do a bigger mix this time so we don't have to keep adding to it. You pick out the way you like doing it best. Either way works. Okay, so I'm going to brush this off. And then I can pick up a little bit of medium as I start. Now remember I said I like to come up to here. So I'm going to do light brushes. I don't want it um, exact. I don't want a straight line, so try not to do that. Same thing's going to happen over here. Okay, all along the bottom here. Just imagine you've got grass down there. Okay, and then we'll do this one too as we get through here. So see, I came up just a little bit higher, so I had a little bit of green. It looked better when I had a little bit of green on the one coaster instead of just two blue ones and one green one. You get a little bit more design. Okay, so... And... Then as soon as this dries, you can use fine grid sanding paper or the sanding block. Okay, a little bit more medium. There's plenty of paint there, but sometimes because it's thin, it gets a little dry, so that's why you'd pick up a little bit of medium. The floating medium is the fluff that's inside paint without pigment in it, so it's clear. 
and it might look slightly milky sometime, but it really does totally clear um, when it dries, when, the, when it's put into the paint. Okay, so I like the green going the same way. And so this will be ready for our bird house, our little vine going up the pole, and our cute little butterfly. So what I was trying to do is get some dimension. So the birdhouse and the butterfly would look, the birdhouse is on this and is raised, then the butterfly would be even closer to us than that. And then the bird it looks like it's up closer to you. So what we're gonna do is build our design from the back coming forward. And the first thing I wanna do like I said, when this dries, is that we take the sanding block and sand on this. So what I'm going to do is dry this really quick, and you guys get yours base coated and dry, and then turn this back on, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, we're back. I want you to fill it. You can fill the raised uh, grain. So what we're going to do is we do a light, a light sanding. We'll knock it off. All right, and then we're gonna take each of these little blocks and just hit them a little bit so that they're smooth because we've got the birdhouse and butterfly and little designs on it also, okay? Now, there we go. You can use fine, sand, fine grid sandpaper too, all right? So there we are. Now, the, now our next step is tracing and transferring our pattern. So I want you to see that I have taken and already prepared these in advance and we're using a fine tip marker. And what you're looking at, I want you to see that we want this just to be the outline. See all the pretty design and detailing on this pattern. We don't need all that. Can you see that we're just coming right on here and tracing the outer edge, the part that's important, because we're going to base coat over it so you won't see that. All right, so we've got your birdhouse, your butterfly. Now, because we break these and separate them right here, I want you to have that break in there when you trace the butterfly and keep these patterns. So when you, re you, when you go paint again, you can put this bird or butterfly on another project. See that? And there we are. All right, so we've got all those. And I'd like to take that away from your painting so you don't get paint on that pattern and keep them inside the hand-painted folder I did for you guys. So now we're going to decide where we want the bird. So I want you to look at this and see where the tail is. It's a little bit into the green. I want about three fingers down for the top of the head. And so when I come back to our project here, I'm going to do three fingers. That's the height. All right, I'm going to slide over and put this pretty close to the edge. And the, the thing I want you to make sure of is that, that you don't tilt this funny looking so that he's um, looks like he's going to fall. Make sure that he's attached to the stem and he's upright. That's what made him look really good. Now I'm going to take some painter's tape and just um, find a place. Let's do it down here so that this doesn't shift now that we know where we want it. And then I want to get some graphite paper and you decide this I'm using gray. There's gray and white. I'm going to put this shiny down and we just slide this under here and we're ready to transfer it. So we've traced it. Now we're transferring it with a stylus and you can take and go all the way around and just do the outside shape. Now what I want you to see on this is this is going to help me. Um, let me do that. This is going to help me see where my flowers and stems are going to go. All right. I usually like using the smaller end here. All right. Now all this gets painted over and base coated, but what does matter is if we do the segments in here so that you see where the different colors are going to go. All right. Now, right here, having his little 
talon right here coming over the stem makes you know where the stem's going to go. So I'm going to check and make sure that I've got the important sections of the bird all on there. Okay. I think we've got it all now. There we go. All right. Now, what's going to happen next is I am going to lay out this birdhouse. Now, what I want you to see on the birdhouse, guys, is that you line these up like you want them on here, and they just fit this 12-inch board, all right, um, our surface here. So I'm going to line this up, making this centered, okay, and then I'm going to separate them. But right now, so there will be a gap, so make sure that it's straight. So what I'm looking at is the side of the birdhouse to make sure that we've got it straight there, okay? So I made sure I have this lined up so the spacing's the same on the two sides, so the birdhouse looks straight. Then we're gonna put the graphite paper underneath, and then we're going to line this all up, the outside of the roof itself, and you wanna make sure that it doesn't go over the top, see? So make sure that you have that there. All right, and then let's come all the way down this side, same way, across here because that's where the color changes for the base coating, and along here. Okay, now you can use a ruler on the side if you want to make it super straight, if you're not too steady there. Actually, I'm going to come put these on later because I'm painting that all white. It's easier not to go around your pattern is easier to come back and put this on afterwards, okay? So we got him all there, all right? And then the last little piece we're gonna do is putting the butterfly. So I'm gonna paint the post and everything and then come back and add the butterfly. You just gotta make sure it's dry before you trace the pattern on, okay? So I'm ready to put my stems in so that then we can take a break. You guys will trace yours on and then add the stems. And when you come back, we'll be ready to put the thistles in. So I'm going to go over here and look on our reusable teaching guides where we're going to place in how you stroke the stems, what brush you're going to use. Everything's going to be here. You paint on this. We make an eraser with folded paper towel into a quarter. We wet the corner of this, and as we're stroking and practicing, we're just going to wipe it off and stroke again, all right, especially when we're doing leaves and different strokes that are going to make it really easier for you to paint, all right. So I have dampened my 12 flat. I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to pick up two-thirds classic green, one-third white and I'm gonna work it back and forth in a blank cubby here. I am gonna pick up a little bit of medium so it moves for me, and I just want you to see that the first thistle, I'm gonna have a stem that's gonna go right where the feet are. So I'm gonna come here, and the thistle's gonna be, if you just kinda gauge about two fingers from the beak, and you come there, you're gonna touch, lean in the direction you're headed, See my little finger? My little finger is pulling that brush down, and I'm going to go all the way down. Now you can see that that's a little light. So to intensify this classic green, I'm going to pick up some cobalt U and a little bit more of the classic green and work it in. See how that darkens it? All right, I'm going to go over this again so that it is just... It's fine up here the color it is, but look what happens when it gets down here. It needed to be a little bit darker down here. Okay, so now my bird's ready to go on there. My thistle's ready to go on. And so we're going to keep going and looking for the next stem. So there's a stem back here that just misses the body. So these are the things I want you to, the uh, parts I want you to paint so that we're ready to come back. And I can bring this down. All right, so right over here. You can do it a little bit higher 
and not worry about it because we're gonna we can put the flower right over it parts of it all right so i want some of these in here before we start there's one right here all right so you've got one two three four there's a little short one here which is five and we might even stroke over that again as we when we come back if we need to nice and smooth there we go so you guys go trace the birdhouse and trace your goldfinch and come back after your stems are done and we'll be ready to do the next steps all right so let's start by base coating our birdhouse body so if you look at the birdhouse base it's going to tell you what we're going to do next all right i want to do a gray mix and so I'm going to pick up some of the white, move it over here, teeny bit of pure black. And get a gray mix, which is going to be for the roof and the, po the base and different parts of the birdhouse body. All right, so I've mixed this. I'm going to wash this out, and then the, the first thing I'm going to do is put the base of the house, birdhouse. Now, I can come here and pick this up and just pull down across here because we're going to make it look like it's got a few slats of wood on the face of this birdhouse. But I don't like this to be... A straight line because lots of times it will look like that right through your painting all right all right now we're going to do the second part of this is coming all the way down to the base there it's easier to come along here and get a straight line on the two edges all right on both sides And then pull your paint. Now I'm going to go a little bit into the where the base is going to go there too. Just to get this all nice and straight. And we're going to shade this with some of that gray as we go. That, that mix that we just made. On the outside edge too so I'm not worried about that being too exact because uh, we're gonna have a line of that gray see right there I do want to match it up and make sure it comes down even though we're gonna separate it a little bit see I want to do the pole before we come down and um, paint the base all right so I'm gonna put the straight pole right down here we just need one line to bring it straight down so that um, it looks natural. And then we're going to come back after that dries and uh, trace on our butterfly. So look, I'm going to come right here. I've got white on the whole brush. I'm going to side load the gray. That's the gray mix, all right? So we're going to come right here. I'm going to push down slightly and pull. And that line helps you be straight. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring a little bit more white along here. And what's really nice later is that we can even add a little bit more of the pure black on the other side. We have the highlight on the right on this one. Okay. And that's basically the color that I'm going to do right in here. All right, so we're going to come right across here for the base with a straight edge chisel of the brush, the 12 flat. All right, I'm going to stroke here, stroke here, and then come on the other side. We also come back with pure black and highlight there later.
All right. Okay, let's go back to our teaching guide. The next thing I'm going to do is, um, it looks like I need another coat of white on here, but I'm going to go ahead and put my gray coat here and maybe touch the white up again. All right, so white right here is doing our gray mix again in this whole area and then white at the top. So we're going to pick up the gray mix that I made, that we made. And we're going to go all along here. All right, and come around where that white little finial is going to be. All right, and just fill in. And this is just the base coat underneath. We're going to restroke over most of that with the shading that we do. So I'm still got my, I'm still using my number 12 flat. And then what we're gonna do is come right in here and let's do a little bit more white. This is the titanium white. All right, all down in here. Ah. Okay. And I've got a little trick. I want you to see if I wet my paintbrush with just water, I can take off splatters. <laughs> and what you're going to love about this paint, you can wipe right on your surface. And it does, because of the sealer in the paint, it will wipe right off. But let's don't paste coat this on top of your surface, okay? On top of your project. Let's come over here away from it because I flicked it all on there. Okay, all right, now the white finial on the top I'm going to do next. I just wanted a second coat on our little birdhouse here, and then it'll be ready for us to put the grooves on here. Now let's go, I'm going to size down when I do the finial here um, to let's pick up our six flat. Whatever size brush you feel comfortable here, since you've got all kinds of smaller sizes in your brush set. Okay. All right, so we've got that ready for when we come back. Let's extend it just a little bit. This six flat worked perfect for me. All right. All right, so we're going to let that set and all the shading and highlighting we're going to do after. And we're going to go over to our thistles. So that do that so you can now come over here and work on these while that's drying. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. With, let's look over here. Let's see. All right, to start the thistle, we're gonna use our 12 flat and use the classic green plus the bumblebee uh, to do the base. Now, this is gonna be a base that we're gonna put on here, right here. We're gonna practice it. And then, um, then we put the thistles in, uh, right from that. And then we start adding this base, all the little leaves that come up on this base, all right? It's kind of like a trumpet area. All right, so to do that, I did use um, Bumblebee and, and uh, Classic Green, and I didn't need the blue tone in it like I did before. So I'm gonna do um, three-fourths Classic, one-fourth White, working this in. And you, the ideal uh, stroke for you to do is to come right here and make sure you got that shade that you want. All right, so you practice that right on here, wipe it off. Now, because this paint has a sealer in it, if you don't wipe it off right away, it's going to adhere to this. And then if you go to try to scrub it off, you're going to take the finish, the sheen that makes it easy to wipe off. You're going to mess that up. All right, so look, I'm going to start here. I'm going to scoop down with pressure and scoop up. So chisel, pressure, stand up. All right. So when you feel good about that, I, you notice this is why it's real important. When I put it over here, I'm going to show you again what I want you to pay attention to is that when we are right here, 
I am going to come here. I am not twisting my brush. I am staying. Watch the position on my chisel. I chisel, come down, and scoop right back up. If you do my rosebuds with me, that's exactly we're sliding down, sliding back up. Watch the ferrule, this part of the brush. There's no twisting. Touch, pressure, lift, and chisel. All right? So let's do the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and do another one right here. And what's going to happen, this one's going to be uh, closer to me, like it's leaning towards me. So I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. All right. And it's going to come back up. All right. That's just for really placement, but it makes it easier for you to see as I start putting the thistles in it. All right, before I pick up the thistle, I'm looking at this and realizing, so this is going to happen to you. You're going to say, oh, I made that too high. So let me show you what I would do to change it up. Because I just looked at that. Remember how I told you it's okay. The flower is going to cover a bunch of this. So I can just come right down here. A little bit more classic green, titanium white. Just come down and make it a little lower. See that? And then I'll show you how we're going to do this. Okay, so we're going to pick up first the diaxazine purple and titanium white. And so we're going to go back and forth. And that's kind of just a double load. All right. Work it in, work it in. Okay. And you probably don't need, you should have enough paint when you're using and doing a single stroke. You need to have enough paint on this 12 that it is going to, uh, stroke without medium. So I'm going to come right in here. So let's go practice this. All right. So I'm going to come right here. I'm going to make sure I've got the color I want. And then I'm going to see my little finger. I'm going to take and my whole hand goes with me. We're not doing this. When you do this, it makes it, it fans it out, the, the chisel. So I'm going to go like this and take my whole arm with me. You see that? This is real important that you practice this because we want it light and airy. Can you see that? Really light and airy. And then I'm going to... So let me show you that it's like a feather I touch. And not this, but I barely touch it really light. Then that gets you these fine little tips that you want. So that's our first stroke. So our first layer of color. So I'm going to come down here to where it needs to be. And I want you to see that I'm going to come across. See, it's kind of light. So I can go here and pick up a little. It's because I was practicing with it. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. And this is going to give me my placement, OK? This light coats my placement. Now you see how fine and thin it is at the ends? Now, this isn't dark enough, so I'm going to, because I practiced here and took some of it off, so I'm going to come back here and just dip dioxazine purple, and I still have my titanium white on there. So now let's come back and see that makes the white show also, along with the dioxazine purple. So we're going straight up, and then I'd like some to fan out to the side. All right, now what happens, this is something when you're a newbie that lots of people have a problem with. They have a problem that oh, I'm touching the stem or I'm touching another flower and I might go over it on the edge. And that's okay, guys. It looks more natural. All right, so now what I do when I get there, sometimes it's just too dark. That one is actually perfect. <laughs> but if it gets too dark, then you might have to turn the brush over because what follows, the color that follows on the chisel is the dominant color, which would be dioxazine purple. But if I got darker than I wanted it to, then I could flip the brush and then the white little tips would show, which in this case, the white's turning lavender. All right, so see that? Really light, 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 light touch. All right, so if I'm doing my multiples, which I am, I'm going to come back in here. 
get more titanium white and dioxazine, all right, purple. And I'm going to do the purple color on all my thistles, okay? First, I'm just teaching you these two right now, though. Okay? And same thing, I can turn around and bring some of the white up, but I just need this more intense dioxazine there. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe this brush out. Let's just wipe it out, and let's pick up. We're gonna split right here on our double loader. We split it, all right, and then we're gonna come here in a cubby, and work that in. I had a little purple in there. It's fine, all right. So we're gonna pick up Jimberry and titanium white, and then we're gonna come right here. And we're going to add some of those pretty Juneberry tones in there. All right, so I want a darker Juneberry right here. Do the same thing down here. Okay, now I'm going to go back now and pick up fresher white. Fresher? <laughs> So fresh white, and with this titanium white and a little bit of, of Juneberry, so it just gets a, a little bit lighter color. Now, this might make you kind of crazy, but this is what I do with my thistles. I like to come back and forth, getting my color, and then at the very end, I would do wash the brush when it's all dry. I like to come in sometimes and just float some darker diazazine purple there to make it richer. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is let's look at the base part here. All right. So we're using a six flat to do this area here. So I've got my six flat still out here. You notice I'm washing my brushes as I go and lay them on the paper towel and don't leave them in the water so that this chisel, I mean, so that the paint doesn't dry in the ferrule area because that's the only thing that's going to ruin your chisel edges. So make sure you do that as you go. And now let's come in here and do this part, but I really want you to practice on here to feel comfortable because what's going to happen here is that these little strokes are right here. There's a big version of it. Okay, but what I want you to see is I'm going to use all when I'm using a 12 and smaller brush to double load that is a little tricky. And so I've learned that if I just do all one color, which is the predominant color, might be white, might be uh, the pure black, but this time it's classic green, and then I want to side load the second color. So if you can look in here where I'm going to go right next to the white with this little brush, or I can bring some over here. There we go. So it's way easier just to side load the color I want to add. All right, now what I did do on these is I did the, the classic green with some bumblebee and a touch of the titanium white. I'm going to go right to the bumblebee and side stroke that. I did white first. You can do either one, but we just want to have titanium white, bumblebee, and the classic green. All right, so it's real important to come over here. This is a bit larger version of it, okay? So uh, this is more of the size for the little guys in the bottom here, all right? So we're gonna slide up and slide back down. So practice that a few times, guys, until you feel comfortable with it, all right? And you can practice it at the bottom of these. And you could just push and stand up, but it looks better, it looks more detailed by us coming back up and back down. Same thing here. And we start at the top and practice it coming down. So it's good to do one of these on your guide before you paint it on your project because it will make it more comfortable when you start painting it. All right. So 
we are going to pick up the two colors. I'm going to go to the base of each one. Now look, I'm holding the lighter colors on the outside. Down and come right back up. And here, okay? Now, I'm gonna do one more. Okay, let's get some more paint. You have to often pick up paint when you're using a smaller brush, okay? All right, so we're gonna do it to both of these. All right, so let's come down here. So push down, chisel, press, and come back down. So see, my key here is I wanna point. I wanna point and then come back. So now let's look at this. We're gonna come up here and come down, push up and come down. And it's okay if you're picking up color. So see, we're picking up a little bit of the purple. Up to a point, get some white. I'm gonna go back over this. I usually let these dry, but I like it when it picks up a little extra color. And I just come every once in a while and get the bumblebee. Now look, this is the next layer, just like right here. Keep that right in front of you so you're comfortable with what you're doing next and what it's supposed to look like. Now see how you don't see these two? So I just pick up more of the titanium. All right, or more of the bumblebee. Let's bring some of that over here. Another layer. Make sure I see a point on each one of those. All right, and sometimes I come back here and shade darker under here at the end. I'm telling you that just in case I forget it, but I'll try to make sure. I show you all that little detail at the end. All right, so let's come up here. All right, we're gonna come here. So these pop open and the thistles come out of this area, right? So let's do a little bit to the side, all right? I love these. I don't know about you, but I used to pick these when I was a little girl on the side of the road. And I we would make powder puffs out of them where we would pull all the hard pieces out and what was left were really pretty, fluffy, like a makeup brush. Little poofs. All right. So there we go. So before we do the bird, I like to get all those in there, but the next thing I wanna do, where we're gonna finish all these, I'm gonna let you go as I do and go finish the rest and come back, but I wanna put some leaves in there first, okay? So what I'm going to do is we're gonna move these to the side, all right? And I want you to see this movement and practice this on here. So it's the same colors, but what I did do, remember I picked up the classic green and then pick up the cobalt U. And let's come right over here and work those guys in. And I'm using the cobalt to get a deeper green tone, okay? Now this is a 12 and many times you'll see me using a three quarter to do this leaf. But for the, to control, where we're putting this, I think you're gonna be a lot happier by using the 12. All right, so I've got those two colors in there and I need, like if I was coming here, I would be picking up the white with my double load area there and come here and work it in. So I have the titanium white and classic green and a little bit for the darkness here, a little bit of the blue cobalt U. So right here, see this? We're gonna pull that down and see we have the darkness over there going to the light, shading over to the light. All right. All right. So let's practice right on top of here. We're gonna go right on this side. So we start on the chisel. The handle of the brush is up. 
We push down and stand up. We'll go out. Looking, my eyes are looking at the outside edge. And what I tell you to do when you do your first stroke is that you go real slow and feel that movement. Then turn and chisel to the tip. All right, so when you're on here, it always looks better when you're quicker. All right, because the blending and shading works better. And then you turn it over. And because this is slick, I can go and do both sides and have no problem. But if you're doing this on paper, you're going to be getting more, more paint if you're practicing on paper. All right, so then I'm going to take the chisel edge right like this and go right in here and clean up that middle. All right, now I want you to practice this a little bit because um, one thing that I think that you need to see on this teaching guide is uh, most people that are having problems with the leaf, what they will be doing, and I'm going to show you a bad example. <laughs> it's not bad, but it just doesn't look as, as good. All right. So, so this is the most, most, most mistakes made is where people are going straight out like to the side and then go, oops, I got a turn. All right. So when they're going like a nervous shake and it gets all mucky, and it's all muddy and they don't see where they're going and they do loops. See all that? So when I'm saying they, it might be you, but that's okay because you're thinking you're doing what it looks like I'm doing. So what I want you to concentrate on that's important for this leaf to look good for you is I want you to see the direction. See these? They're going all upward. And I say it's like a Christmas tree. So see all those wiggles? And here's the top and the wiggles back. So now let's look at this thinking that. Thinking I'm here. So here's the base. It's, a, it's like an arrow. And here's the center. So as I'm coming up, I'm heading upward and back to the center, out, back to the center, and then slide to the tip. But they're all going in that direction. So hopefully that helps you a little bit when you're trying to, even though you're right on top of my strokes, when you get over here off the guide, you're going, how come it doesn't look like that, Donna's? All right, so that's because, or it doesn't look like the guide looked. I did it good there. All right, so this one I want to share with you. We're going to put a, one stem's going to go here with a leaf, one here. All right, and I'm going to come in here and maybe even do another one here. But what I did do, just because it might peep out a little bit, is to do a couple over here. All right. So let me show you. I'm coming out here. This one goes underneath a little bit. And make sure you turn it. People ask me all the time, can I turn my surface? Of course you can. All right. So look, out here. Now this is a little dry. So look, I'm going to go into the medium, barely touching it, not a lot. And then see it moves well for me. So see those little wiggles and then back, wiggle. All right, so see it gets kind of messy in the middle. Then if you take this stem and go right in the middle. All right. All right, then I can come right in here. Let me pick up a little bit of bumblebee. See this one, I'm wiggling up and then I can chisel and push and slide down. There's some different ways you can get that same look. All right, so let's come over here and do a big one, right? A, a big one. <laughs> We're going to pick up the cobalt U and classic green, work it in, pick up some bumblebee and some titanium white. Oops. I overdid it. Let's pick up more classic green. There we go. All right, so right in here. Let's start this time with a V. Now I want you to see when you're looking at this, see that V? This is an arrow going down if you're looking at that. And But I want to get that Christmas tree. Look at that. See that? 
So this is what I'm doing. I'm coming here. I'm wiggling out and in. Okay, now I want to show you that is muddy. So when your brush gets like that, I did that on purpose so you could see. <laughs> when, it's, when it's muddy like that, this is what we're going to do. I clean it off, not by going in the water. The paint inside your brush is still there and it's good. So I'm going to pick up the Cobalt U, the Classic Green, and this is a cleaner spot. See, I got mucky here. So if that happens, go back to a nice clean spot. Pick up, I can pick up just a touch of those colors. And see, there we go. It's going to be way cleaner. And I tell you not to wipe this usually, but I have a whole lot of paint there. Um, but you usually will mess up when you start wiping things off. I tell you to reload your brush and repaint, okay? I want, I want a little bit more yellow, the bumblebee. Okay, so we're going to come right by this arrow, the V that we made there. See how I'm wiggling, wiggling the outside edge? All right, and then we're going to pull another stem in, okay? So, like I said, I did a little bit over here, just in this area, and all this is pretty much covered, but just in case some of it peeps out, and it's good practice to try to work on it a little bit there, okay? All right, so what I'd like you to do, and I'm going to go, I'm going to finish my adding my leaves, all right? So I'm going to add my thistles and my leaves, and there's this one little bud here, and what I want you to see on this one, this is just this bottom part, but it doesn't have the thistles coming out, all right? And we will be right back. So take time. Put all the thistles in. Look, remember what I said? I'm sorry, I'm going to pull this back over again. We have triangles. Every one of these fit into a triangle, all right, so that you know where you can place them. I have a little one at his beak, and then these are the two I just showed you. I, can't, I stepped down one more, put a bud there, and then these two are across from each other, all right? So let's do that, and then we'll come right back. Okay, so now that we finished all the thistles and the leaves, I got a little big on some of my leaves. I don't know how you did, but it doesn't matter. It's a pretty garden of leaves and thistles. And I blown dry, I use a blow dryer to dry it. And then I want to, before I do my bird still, I want to do some fun details on the um, birdhouse and these three pieces here. What I have done is transferred the holes in the perches and the butterfly. And see it's separated here, so you can see that shows it on the pattern. It makes it easy for you to see. You see the little peeps of green coming out from back there. And then let's get this piece done so we feel comfortable with it all going with our rest of our project here because we're going to come across with some grass and all too. All right, so let's, let me pull this back off, put this to the side, and let's paint the setting, okay? Now, we're going to look really close again here on what we're getting done. We're going to take the gray mix, which is dry, so I'm going to make some more, and shade on the sides of this um, body of the birdhouse. Put the gray, the medium gray mix on the insides of the holes there for the birdhouse. And then we're going to work on the shingles on the roof. Okay? So um, as soon as we finish that, we're going to do our little vines, flowers, and our butterfly. Okay. So I'm going, like I said, to make another mix here. So we're going to pick up some white. This is titanium white and a little bit of pure black again. 
And let's do a mix here. And I want to get a little bit darker this time. So a little bit darker. So that the white really shows when I highlight. Or, or the pure black's going to show when I do the roof line. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. This is a 12 flat. We're going to come over here and practice this. All right. So I am picking up little bits of the pure black here and side load that. All right. Now I am going to pick up a teeny bit of medium just on the chisel. Teeny bit of the floating medium just on the chisel edge. Okay. Now what's going to happen here? Is I'm going to come right along here and do this, but I'm going to show you on your teaching guide where we practice this. All right, you're going to come right here and you're going to wiggle along there, practice, wipe it off, practice again, because you want to feel real comfortable with that before you take it to your roof. All right, and so we've base coated it and now we're putting the rows on here all right so i can i can come right in to that cubby there and pick it up now i have plenty of the medium gray mix and it's smoothing smooth because of this um, medium being in there and you're not really needing a lot of the gray because um, the gray is already base coated. So you can see as you're losing the uh, pure black that we want to come back and pick a little bit more up. Now, I just like to share with you, there's two ways to float. You can float something dry like this with just, oops, a little too dark, with just floating medium and pure black. Or you can do like I just did, picked up the medium gray and um, side load the pure black just like you're watching me do. All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush to do the um, holes and the perches. I'm going to come in here um, with, you can use a 12. I'm going to go down to a smaller one if you want to feel more comfortable with filling in this area, this is an eight. Just because I think you can control it a little bit easier. So I've gone on both holes here with the eight flat with the gray mix, the darker gray mix, and both perches that are on there now. So if you look here, it's going to show you the highlights, where the arrows go to make that happen. Like this goes up, over, and back down because we want this to be curved back here to make it look like a round post. And then I two things. I can come in with a teeny bit of pure black and I can make the bottom of that perch and up the the one side 
for shadow. And then we're going to put white inside. We're going to do that titanium white in just a minute for highlights. So now I can take this 8 flat. It still has the gray on it. I want to shade on the left side. And come right here and shade on the left side again. All right. And I'm going to wash that brush and then go. Let's get the two flat to do the highlight right at the end of the perch. Let's go upward with titanium white. So it would probably be better right here to do the pure black and the white at the same time. There we go. All right. But now I'm going to come with this titanium white. Stroke that into the brush. Okay, I'm going to come in with a titanium white, work that in, and then come right along this inside edge on the right. Just put a little bit of a glow, just a highlight. Okay. All right, now let's work on the very, while we're doing this little stuff. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take the titanium white, pick up some more of our gray mix, and come right along here so we have the, light, the darker gray on the outside, the lower edge. And then we do the same thing right in here on the little knob at the top. Let's bring some more white in there. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to take and do the shading. And you can see where I brought some shading on top of the darker gray here and with the white highlight. So while I've got this little brush, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Let's come right here on the base. Um, let's get this paint all out for the 12 because it tells you right here that on the base we used the... Um, little bit of white all right so a touch of white i'm going to come right across here and a little bit from the other side and i did come a little bit more down okay but then i'm going to use that little bit darker the darker gray mix and come down the perch i mean the um, post all right i can also come and highlight a little bit along here afterwards a little bit of that darker gray all right and along here just a few streaks in there all right, and that's just with a chisel. Okay, so now we're going to base shade these um, panels of wood that are on the front of this birdhouse. Um, so I'm going to use floating medium on the whole brush. And I'm going to pick up some of this medium gray back here where I'm using that gray with the floating medium, okay? I picked up too much color. So floating medium and our medium gray. So let's come on the outside edge. See, I'm going to wipe off a little bit because it's a little more than I want. And you're going to come down. This is the mix, the medium gray mix I made, not the light gray. There we go. All right, so I'm going to keep going in that same place with, and that we're only putting the gray on the one edge, okay? And we're just going to come right along here, and you can make this lighter if you feel more comfortable with it lighter. Let's 
See how you bring the light in here? We've got to get these as straight as we can get them, though. Let's take a little bit of that off. Now, lots of times I'm going for the effect not to be like a perfect line with a ruler, just with a shading. So you can take and use the chisel edge on this. And I usually say when I'm floating, don't use the chisel edge. But what we're doing here is making separations in the, the wood strips that are making the birdhouse. So you can do that chisel. It is okay to be a straight, I mean, a more definite line. All right, and then the last one, I'm going to turn it sideways. This is a little heavy. Do you see this with the floating medium? What's nice is that you can still keep picking this up and lightening it. But if you're using straight paint, this will not come off this easy. Okay. All right, so I'm going to clean this back up. I'm going to get medium and go right in here again. So the floating medium makes this move so nice for you. All right, finish this up by putting the floating medium and the medium gray mix down the side of this birdhouse. Okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is at this point I base coat in my butterfly. All right, I'm gonna base coat it in with Bumblebee. And when you've got a color underneath, you might, depending on how dark you get with your green, you might want to put a white coat in there first. And But this one I want you to do is go to your butterfly and we use a six flat to put the Bumblebee in, a two flat to add some pure orange in here. But I'm going to take one step here, and then because of the white I'm adding, I'm only adding the white because of the darkness of the pole, so you might not have that problem, but I want to show you how I would do that to get it to the yellow, okay? Now, go work on getting this to this point, and we'll come back, and we'll be ready to finish up our little design here. Okay, so we're back. I'm, we are taking a little bit of pure orange and just highlighting. And you do all this highlighting before you put the, the pure black on top of the butterfly. So it's nice to put the shading instead of trying to put it in between the black detail. And so I'm just taking the chisel of the six flat and deciding where I want that orange that pure orange to show through, okay? And this is up to you. Just make it look exactly like you would like it to look. Just having some color in here does two things. It makes it easier as you're um, to give it a different look, a more detailed look, but it also is easy to put in when it's wet like that. So this is how I determined where I wanted to put my orange. See, I, not the script liner, but the two flat. I see the arrows. It shows you in which direction to add it. Now the next step is using the two script liner and highlighting. Um, I, first of all, I highlighted two little white spots on the wings because all that color should go in before you add your black liner. So I just put, you know, a lot of the wings have a nice little white uh, spot at the bottom. So go ahead and put all that so it can be drying. All right. And I don't want to totally outline it until that white's nice and dry, but I will show you that I want you to see how we do the head and the body here. So I'm going to my pure black, and I'm putting in 
an oval spot right there for the head. I'm rolling this brush so I get just the tip and I'm going to come down and do the antennas. All right, then I'm going to come right down the body. Now you can just do little circles all the way down like our pattern or you can just push left, push left and slide to a point. Okay, and I think I can go ahead and outline this. All right, a little bit of water, roll that to a nice thin, this is a two script liner. If you want a really thin point, you roll it and just have a little bit of water so it's a little inky. All right, I can then put two dots on the ends of those antennas and I'm going to come around. Now, if you see, you can't go up and come down comfortably. You've got to pull these strokes towards you, towards the center. All right. So you're going to touch and pull. Just don't try to push the brush up is what I'm trying to say. Pull the bristles towards you or down. Okay. All right, so now what happens with lots of these wings is that they have a little, um, if you keep um, looking at what we've done step by step here, it's going to share with you that all this detailing comes in. So I did detailing on one side of the body so you can see. So I'm coming out here with the script liner, pulling it right like it shows on the teaching guide, okay, really close ups. Then I like to come right in here and curve because I usually have this kind of look at the end of the wing. We're going to come this way where the white is. See now to go in there and try to paint that white afterwards is a little tricky, but look, it's there now. So it's wonderful. All right. So then I'm going to put three dots. One, two, three. You can have fun with this part and just look at butterflies you like. But I like to put some dots. I like to do some separated areas. And this one, this butterfly had some little choppy little detail here. Okay. Oh, I didn't do it on this side because I didn't do it on my teaching guide. Sorry. There we go. All right, so then I'm going to come right here, and I did two of these. And they're zigzag looking. Okay, just short little. That's how I do bumblebees, too. All right, see that? And the only thing I did to add a little bit more highlight on this is I put... Um, a teeny bit of, with this two script liner, of the titanium white highlight on just this side coming down. All right, then I made that good. You can also like just put a little highlight in a couple of these if you want um, or not. All right, now what we're going to do now is this cute little vine. So we're going to take um, the two script liner again with classic green. Okay, and I added some water and worked that in so I can make that move for me. But rolling it till we get it back to the little point. Now what I did for this, let's look on here a little bit. See how I took the vine in and out around it? So what we want to do here is we want to practice. I want you to see that, look, this is a nice little vine. See the vine? Practice on here, right on top of this, so you feel the movement. And these are some little leaves we did earlier, but I'm going to go and practice those again with you in just a minute. All right. So let's pick up. I like to go in uh, behind, in front. I ran out of paint. And then back here. And then let's come a little bit up here. All right, but I like to take some that wander out. OK, 
Okay. And a little bit in here and over here. Okay. Now we have this cute little flower to do here. I'm going to move this over because I want you to see it with me. All right. See those little daisies, little small ones. Also, I've got this script liner. I just saw a little, some more that I wanted to touch real quick before I forget. Is I'm going to come right along here and put a little bit of a highlight, a little bit more of a highlight. Okay. So we need to make sure that we put some wandering leaves in here, just right here on the vine. All right, we're going to add the small leaves. I put some colors there just like we did earlier. So we're going kind of like the leaves we were practicing here, remember? So I'm picking up the classic green and some bumblebee. And this is a real small brush. So I want you to see that we're pushing pressure and standing up. Pressure, lift to a point. Pressure, lift to a point. Now you can do the same thing here and wiggle a little bit, but I mostly did these little small one stroke leaves. All right, so practice it and feel comfortable with it. And then what we're going to do, I use a little bit more bumblebee on this than some of my other greenery that we did. So I want you to see one, two, three. All right, and we just keep picking up a little bit of bumblebee, pressure left, and pull the stem. So you want to pull the stem with the chisel. One two, three. Those are right on the stem, so you might not have, on the vine, so you might not have to do much of a stem on that. So one, two, three. And I like for all the leaves not to be exactly alike. I like to have some with brighter colors, some with darker colors sometimes. All right, so mostly what you see is light green, some yellow in the background, which is the bumblebee. I did come up here some, but the the um, little white daisy doesn't show up too good on the white birdhouse, so I put it on that base there. Okay. So now we're going to do some little daisies. And I've got it right here, which is still this two flat with, see how I'm flattening the brush? I'm going to flatten it with white. All right, so, and I do a clock, 12, 3, 6, 9, and I came touch and pull, touch and pull. So I'm touching out here, pressure and lift, pressure and lift. And then you fill in and fill the petals in between, right in between, which I don't think you can see that too well. But then what I did with the yellow is I came all the way around and did like short little yellow strokes. A little bit shorter than the white and it made a cute little flower okay and then we just dotted the center with the handle or with the tip of the two script liner all right so what I'm doing here is it came up in this area and then 12 3 6 9 and then put a few strokes in between all right now I came back into some of these and added the yellow later. And so the key is that we're coming in here and adding some little strokes also to do trailing flowers. So how you do those is you do like three, two, and then one. So they're trailing off of the main vine 
All right, so we're going to come down here. And this is the two flat on the chisel. Push, lift, push, lift. There we go. And do another big one here. But seeing after you get going, you don't have to do the clock. But the clock helps you make them more consistent. All right, little, little bits down here. And a few trailing here. Okay. All right. Now, what I want to do is come back and just put uh, the bumblebee in just a couple of them so that the center is more yellow. So I also stroke those. I remember I was saying I pulled them in like a small, small daisy. You don't have to do them all, but it really adds to your color there. I'm going to come with a classic green on the handle of the brush and put dots in here. But you could use another color. You, the yellow is not going to show up. So you could do the, the cobalt blue. Now, what I'm going to do on here, all right, see the grass that we've done here? We're going to come right in here before we start our bird. I'm excited to start the bird. This is a lot of detail, but I think when it's all done, you'll like that complete look, okay? So we have these lined up here. We separated a little bit. Are we, we're pretty darn close. It just we lifted it. All right, so what has has to finish this off along the bottom is we can use um, a 12 or a 3 quarter to do the little grass at the bottom. All right, and I think that it looks a little stark still. So, and I came in here with, if you look at the guide, I would like you to try um, to practice it on the guide, is we're going to pick up some classic green, a little bit of bumblebee, and a little bit of the titanium white. Okay, and so I'm going to start over here. Let's practice first. Okay, so I'm using classic green, wicker white, and a little bit of bumblebee. And then I'm going to bring the teaching guide over here and show you that I'm going to do the same thing as a thistle. So it's the same movement where you're taking your whole arm with you, all right, to do the grass. And I want some of those taller. So I want you to see that I think it's going to warm our project and make it look good uh, by having this in here. See? But then I want it to continue on to the background here. So now if this is feeling a little thick and not moving as well, Dip a little bit of floating medium, work that in, and then come back. Because then it'll just get some higher grass here. All right, a little bit here and there. And the final piece is our bird. And I love um, teaching you these different birds and letting you see that they're obtainable, they're fun. And they're not difficult. They're just one step at a time and make each step look good. Okay, and so last thing I'm going to do is come over here and do a little bit here. And by the way, you've probably seen, and when I went off to dry these, I did put pure black first coat on each one of these and on my 12 by 12. So that's just pure black, just one coat on the outside. Um, so when we get ready to do the finishing touches, that will be there, okay? So here we go. This is the next step. And you know what? Since this is fresh wet, I'm going to move this to the side, all right? And I want to concentrate on this right next to your bird we're going to be painting. So the first thing with the goldfinch is that we paint the body with the bumblebee and titanium white, all right? So I'm going to come in here and help go over some of this greenery here 
with the white so that the yellow is going to pop, all right? And we want him front and center, so he's going to be on top of that thistle, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is right in here, it's going to stay white, right in this area. But usually, I go ahead and paint the whole thing yellow and the body part, the main color. And it's going to come up here because the pure black is going to go over the yellow. But we're going to come right down here, and it's really important. This is why your patterns are so important, because you can lose the shape of this bird, so any bird, so quickly. And our patterns have made this body just right. So when you trace this on, trace and transfer it on, look, you know exactly the belly, the head, how the back, because the difference in birds or how the back is, where the tail's, you know, if the tail's going straight up, straight down, um, or in another angle. So this is going to make your birds more successful, is just making sure you do a nice, good tracing on here. Because then, look, we're just base coating it in. All right, so here's his back. I go really nice and slow along here. Try not to get bigger and bigger. All right, and then we will come down in this area with the tail. And then I can bring my white highlights back up in there. All right, so this is showing you that I base coated this. I came in with white. See the white? And every little step is on here for us. Even let's go to the beak while that's sitting for a few minutes. And I can use uh, my six flat. This is the other thing. It's very easy to get out of control when you're base coating in your beaks. And the beak's very important. And I know you can wipe off if you wipe off quick, but please don't go and try to mix this blue and add the blue back on. So that means you've got to be more precise when you're laying this color on. So we've got the pure orange and a little bit of bumblebee, but I'm going to put the orange first. See right here? So I, I did a little bit of both, so let me put the bumblebee on here too and show you that as you're putting it on, we're going to come down very carefully, chisel with the chisel, chisel back, and then fill in. All right? So I lost my folded eraser here. <laughs> okay. So I want to see it really close so you can see that we're going to go straight there. Straight along here, because uh, just remember, the beak goes into the head, into a V. All right, and then we're coming to see the V that we just made. And we're going to come right here. So then you carefully add it, fill it in. Okay, concentrate. Do not... Um, make this out of shape because this is very important in your bird all right there we go so we've got the beak there there's colors that are going to go on the beak but for right now we're leaving that there now i'm going to pause and i'm going to blow dry this so that we can keep going and this needs to look long and slim but it will as we're adding the wings and all to it and the tail so Blow dry yours, get to this point, and we'll come right back in a minute. Okay, let's review what we've done with our bird so far. We've taken and transferred the pattern on. We have base coated in the body with white so that now we put the bumblebee yellow on top of that and we've dried it. Now, I need to come in and put, we need to come in and put the pure black on the top of the head and then add the white in two places you can see we have white, and then we come here and have white before we put all the feathers on. So let's pick up the six flat. I also cleaned out my palette because I needed a fresh one for the to get started again. I made myself a new folded wet paper towel eraser for my teaching guide, 
And I want you to see that I'm just coming around here and getting this shape right here is what we're looking for. All right, so I am coming around here and I see how you come under the beak, a little bit under the beak. I'm coming here a little bit here to a point and then following around the round of the head. All right, so I'm going to turn this around so I can get to it because it's easier to get a smoother look because we want this really nice and smooth. And just watch out for getting bigger and bigger as you're trying to touch that up, okay? All right, now I'm going to wash this out, and I want to add those white, titanium white areas. So we're going to pick up some white here, and I want it all in this area. All right, and it's going to go down. I'm going to go ahead and come here. It doesn't matter. You're just filling it in. We're going to go ahead and fill this in even if the pure black is going over it because then I, I'll see the white where I want to see it, okay? Because it is actually part of the wing in here. All right. A little bit thicker there. And then I want this point coming down that I might clean up later. This point, elongated in this area here, goes into the tail. All right. Now, I'm just placing it there so I see where I'm going, but I am going to have to restroke this to make this go into the tail right here, real nice and clean. <clears throat> okay, so let's wash that out. Now the first thing I want to do is just put black into this area, all right? And then we're going to come, see how I started putting black all through here? And it's the pure black, and then this wing is on the other side. So let's pick up pure black again. And right along here in this back area, the back side of the body, is the wing on the other side. All right, so right here is what we're doing. We're going to come right along here. Nice, clean stroke. So the wing's just barely showing over here. And my pattern shows that it goes all the way down to there. All right, so now I'm going to go to the 12. Now I'm going to pick up my 12 flat. And we always wet and lay it on the paper towel, okay? And now we're concentrating on that shape right here for the wing, okay? So I'm going to come right in this area. And sometimes, if you feel more comfortable, you can put a little pencil line. But I, we've got a really clear path for you to follow here. So, And there again, I don't like stopping and doing this, but you could retrace, retransfer the wing area on here if it makes it more comfortable for you. All right. And it's coming all the way down here. Can you see? It's not as far as that point of the white. So if you come here and decide, it's going to help me to, to say where this is going to be here, then I just pull this on down to there. All right? And then what I'm going to do is come little strokes all the way up here. All right? And it's showing you how to do those strokes right over there. all the way up just want it nice and clean and then fill this in okay now if you feel like i'm going a little quick for you just stop the video and get caught up each time or re-watch it if you're like i didn't see that lots of times you're concentrating on the strokes that you're doing and you don't look up when i when i move to another spot on another step Okay, I don't like this part right here. I just need to smooth it out. There we go. All right, so let's put in the tail area here before we come back and put white on the wings, all right? So every part of this, I want you to look. There's the wings, there's the tail feathers, the feet, every single part. 
Um, so as, as listed right here for you on your teaching guide. So here's your tail. And this is the feathers coming up with the highlights on it for you. And every one shows you the arrow on which direction. So here we are. It's a little bit of a V down in here. All right. So I'm going to come down. Um, I actually didn't put a total V on my original, but on the worksheet, which is what we should do, we have a nice stroked. V right in there. All right. Now I'm going to come right along here and clean this up. Right there. And now we're going to make long strokes all the way to the bottom. But now you saw that I made the strokes here first, up and then back down. And then I'm going to fill in, there we go. I might not have to go fix that white. It does, it does look better. Okay, so now look at this. Everything is already looking a nice shape for the bird. You see that? So what we want to do now is take this pure black loaded brush, and I'm going to come in here and stroke on the side of the titanium white and side load that white. All right. So now what's going to happen, <clears throat> I really think you need to practice this because there's a couple of things that are happening here. Right in here on the wing, you can see the movement. This movement is like that. So you're going to come along here and practice that movement. So we're not stroking this big We're. It's not like turning and going up and over. I want you to see this. It is. I'm pushing the white out and then coming, let releasing. See, push and then release. And it automatically gives you that. You don't have to do a stroke. All right. Like we did on the thistle. All right, now these, we touch, lean forward, and pull. Lean in the direction we're headed. All right, and we're going to do those. And you need to practice that so you feel comfortable and you want it to look like this. So I made, I made this right here so you could easily go right on top of here and practice what it's going to look like. All right, see, you can see there you should have got more white. All right, just like that. And remember, you clean this off as you go. This paint's got a sealer in it, and it's made to stick. <laughs> You're going to start right here with the white coming up into these, feather, these feathers here. And then you want to start here at the bottom of feather and layers coming up, and then doing your little scoop feathers across the top. And then we're going to go down and do the tail feathers the same way. All right. Now, I do want you to see, I didn't mention that yet, but getting ready for um, the new year here, these are prototype. So they're not uh, the same shine that you're going to get. We have a coating on ours that you stroke and they wipe off just like we always have. But this is um, a mock-up so that I could teach you today, okay? So I'm going to come along here, and we want the white to show so we're pulling we're pulling the pure black first and the white follows all right so that's how you're getting that stroke in there with the white see i keep picking up the titanium white and i'm coming down here see how nice that stroke is now i'm going to build it up slowly going up this edge Keep looking at, at your finished project. Write on your reusable teaching guide. Okay, so next we do a second row. I keep picking up the titanium white. All right. And then the last stroke I'm doing across here is where 
I'm doing this little pressure along here. And I did brush across here just a little bit with a titanium white on the edge on that corner of the 12. All right. I'm going to wipe this off. And I took it over there a little bit more than I wanted to. So let's just bring it around because, see, that's the, actually the back side of the wing. Okay. Now, I want to finish the tail, and then I'm going to show you um, what's going to happen around the face. So coming back and getting pure black and titanium white. All right, so I'm gonna come right in here and do the straight tail feathers. They're long and straight. So, going on the outside edge here. There we go. And then I'm going to come in all right so I've kind of gone overboard with the white so what I'll do is I'll wipe this pick up the pure black and I can come back down and just like you've probably done before I might still have to bring more titanium white back up. Okay. I'm still going to pick up a little bit of titanium white. There we go. A little bit cleaner. All right. So now let's look up at the face area. And this is what we're following. We have a little, with literally, with a, um, a two flat, a little bit of the pure black on the tip of the beak. And then we put the line in here and then a little line of white. But what I'm going to do is take my six flat and I'm going to shade up in here and around. Okay. And I did have some feathers that I kind of pulled out here. Do you see that? All right. So I'm going to take the six flat, pick up the pure black, and just feather a few of these little. See that? That gives you the illusion of feathers, too. All right. I hope you're liking your bird. So this is why I tell everybody, it's kind of like uh, any bird I've ever done. I said, it's really easy. You're just doing one stroke at a time, and all you have to do is make sure every stroke is pretty. <laughs> so I, it will be. It will be. You're going to keep doing your strokes. Let's see. Here's the two flat. All right. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of pure black. All right, so we're gonna. I gotta be careful not to lay on this. I'm gonna pull it closer to me. But see, and you could practice right here and see if you feel comfortable making those little strokes, or this one. I should have come up a little bit more. See that, and then the little line there. Well, when we come on here, I've got to get it so I can see. So I'm gonna come right here and make a little line. Right there, and a little bit down here, and then very carefully flatten this. Okay, okay, so I want you to see where we're at right now. We're going right here to the cheek, and we're going to pick up Bumblebee, and we're going to get a teeny bit of pure black. And we're using this instead of floaty medium. Like I told you, sometimes it's paint, sometimes it's medium. 
to float and shade with. So that makes a warm, soft look right there. Okay. I'm also going to come in here under this wing where where the talon and leg come in here. I'm just going to put just a little bit right there so you see where it's coming from. Right in here. Okay, so now we're going to get our script, our two script liner, and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of titanium white and I'm going to roll it. You'll, you'll tell right away that you need a teeny bit of water. We're not making it super inky. We're just making it thinner and you can pull it to see if it's going to show. All right. So what I did right here is I came around right there and then for this eye, if you look on here, I show you how to do the eye right there where it's already black instead of putting a dot there. The pure black's already there. So what I can do is I can come around to make the circle shape of that bird eye and then put a little bit of a heavier glare inside the eye and see it looks good just like that. Now, what happens if you put too much black? It's very easy. You go back with pure black and you just put a few dots of pure black right in there. A lot, a lot of times I'll use for more control the number one script liner because it's short and you can get to it and easier for some of you. So either one will work for you, okay? There we go. Okay, so now I, you know what I failed to do is I just remembered I didn't do the little tip of the beak. I didn't make it uh, pure black, so I forgot that part. So let's go back before I do the um, talons and the little leg and come here and get this little bit of black at the point of the beak. All right, so that lots of these little things I'm showing you are the characteristics of the bird that we're painting. And so it's real important. Some of these things are real important. Some of them, not all birds have that same thing there, um, the same features. So I'm going to come right here to the stem that we're on. And you can see that I'm putting pressure. This is with a two script liner with pure black pressure, lift, pressure, lift as it comes around the stem. All right. Then I'm just going to streak a teeny bit of white. This is titanium white. I'm going to do little highlights and maybe a little highlight on the top of the leg and everything's shown right here to you. All right. So you can practice it right there and see if you can get that pressure lift movement of those little talons, little feet. All right. So now we get to do some fun extra steps. All right. All right. <clears throat> so I love I'm doing little trim and, and details on the outside edge and um, uh, some different things. Um, Miss Chris does lots of Christmas holiday stuff and I love that every border and every outside edge has something fun on it. I'm just coming along here tapping and it's random so each time you do this it's going to look like different in different areas. So it kind of looks like that stationary paper that has <clears throat> the deco edge on it. All right, so we're at an angle. Watch this, I'm at an angle and I'm just tapping. And I, I um, continually go and pick up more paint. So also <clears throat> did this, I also did this on these little guys. So when you're coming around on those, it's the same kind of thing. You're going to be at an angle and you're just tapping along the way. Just go pick up. I can skip the butterfly and come back in here. A lot more paint there. 
So see, that makes that really stand out when it's on there. Um, and before, I'm going to let you guys continue and finish that, but I want to add one more thing that I thought looked really good is to fly spec this. And um, it's kind of like it's, it, if it's something you really think you'd like or not. So it's up to you. It's your choice. We're going to put this here and show you as we flick this on here. We're going to use a toothbrush. Okay, put these right here. And the last finishing touch, if I can get all this black off of me, <laughs> is I'm going to come in here with, I want you to see this really good. So see, they're just little specks all over here. And it only went up so far on here. But see how all the edges on here, see how nice that looks? Now what you're going to do is you're going to take these and you're going to, I finish the back and then cut a piece of, foam cord board, put the glue, attach it to, um, I would attach it to the wood coaster, glue it on here, then put glue, and then as you put it down quickly, you want to line them all up and make sure while the glue is still a little wet that they are all lining up where you want them. We left an edge here and made it go off the top and off the bottom slightly, okay? So I'm going to move this because I don't want to get specks all over it anymore. Okay, so we're going to take water and a, a toothbrush and we're going to go right in. Okay, but what I want to do before you go to your project, I want you to see if it's too heavy, if it's, there we go. We want a really light flick on here until we see that it's how we want it, okay? And you might put paper down or something making sure that you don't cover everything and yourself. But see, I'm flicking it away from me. And then just wipe your surrounding surfaces pretty quick and it'll come off. Okay, I finished my deco edge. I did mine a little heavier than my original. And so whatever yours turns out, if you're happy with it, that's good. But you know what? I was taking a second look at mine and I realized I like having a little bit of the cobalt U shading on the blue area and a little bit of the classic green down on the bottom. And I also had a little bit of shading. And all this is not on the teaching guide. It's just something I was seeing that I'd like to add to this piece because it still looks a little stark and which is fine for many people. I just like to keep going and going. But I'm going to come over here with some floating medium and a little bit of pure orange with a 12 flat. And I'm going to put a little bit of that color in the bee, in the cheek there and a little bit. His tummy got a little big there, but I'm going to come right there and add a little bit of that. And I think that warms that up a little bit. See that? I'm going to add some floating medium, lay it kind of wipe off a little bit, and then pick up the cobalt U. All right. So let's go along here and see just with some medium how that kind of warms that up. But make sure that the the black, pure black, is totally dry. I hit it with a blow dryer, but I still have a little spot there that's still not dry. So let me take that off. Okay, medium, a little bit of the cobalt, and let's go along here. See how that just warms that up? And then when I came to the green, I'm going to come down to the classic green and I'm doing it around all these coasters and I'm coming around with them from the green area too down in here. See that? Right in there just like the original. I just went right past this spot part but look how much nicer it makes it. Okay. So there we go. Now Let's go back and look at your, your finished piece. So 
See how these are set over like a finger over? They hang over the top and the bottom slightly so we can leave a gap. We came around and put the little blue highlights all around and the green all around these edges. So there you go. It's finished. And I love the detail in this one. Wow, wasn't that fun? We learned so much today. I love doing this with you and I can't wait for you to share your pictures. Now, if you haven't already joined our Facebook group, it is so much fun. It's Let's Paint with Plaid. And when you come on that group, you will be loving the community that's there. And I would love for you to post your picture. Make sure you put hashtag Let's Paint Challenge so everybody can see it and enjoy what you've learned in my lesson. So until next time, let's paint.